Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and what you see here in front of me is the 3D Gents 1 3D printer, and this video serves as my official review. Oh, I, I can't wait to tell you about this printer, and it's, well, it's an interesting story, so I hope you stay tuned. Let's do this. Are you ready? Go. <laughs> Ah, welcome back. So like I said, this is the 3D Gents 1 3D printer, and this is going to be my review. This printer was provided by Preet over at Designbox 3D. They're the official distributor of 3D Gents printers here in the United States of America. Before we dig in, let's, let's get technical about this printer. The 3D Gents 1 3D printer is from 3D Gents. Obviously, it features the patented quick hot end exchange system called PUSH. It's got automatic heat bed calibration, auto compensation during printing, and that's all on the ceramic build plate. It's 235 millimeters on the X, 255 millimeters on the Y, and 195 millimeters on the Z. And according to the website, it is ultra solid construction. The nozzle provided is 0.5 millimeters and it'll go down to 100 microns precision. It takes 1.75 millimeter filament. The nozzle will get to 250C and the build plate will get to 180C. It takes standard G code, so any slicer you throw at it that exports G code will work with it. And last but not least, these stylish orange sides are magnetic. Yeah, magnets are cool, but how do they work? Well, with that information out of the way, let me show you some of the prints. And I've printed with PLA, ABS, uh, PETG, and I used filamentives, recycled PET. All came out just fine. What's included with the printer is this little pendant, and it's got a spinner. There it goes. And it's printed in place, and that's just to kind of show you the, the characteristics of this printer and what it's able to do. And the the, the little pendant looks great. I did also print this. This was on the card. It's a calibration print and I printed two because this one had some lifting off the build plate. More on that in a second. So this one stuck once I got it to stick and it's 150 millimeters on the X and it's 150 millimeters on the Y. Once it was done printing, I did take my digital calipers to it and along the X it was 149.97 millimeters and along the Y it was 150.02 millimeters. I would consider that fairly accurate. These prints here are examples of RPET and PETG. The detail is there. The layering is good, top layer is great, no stringing, no support problems that came out really well. The Dice Tower print that I like to print also works well, and this is one of the few that actually has a working gate easily right off the bat. Top layers are good. Finally, this TARDIS unseats the Orion as having the best TARDIS that I've printed. The, the, the bars in the windows look fantastic. This is. This is easily the best TARDIS I've printed, and I would, I would, I'm gonna keep this one. This is mine. Preet also provided models for a GoPro mount, and this would, see if I can hold this right. So this kinda, I think this, no, see, this goes like this, and this goes like this, and then once you have this screwed together, it'll mount on the build plate like so, with the GoPro mount going right on top. And I just never made it to the hardware store to get uh, screws and bolts and stuff to put it on there, but I do have it and I will put it on there and then it will travel with the build plate. Let's talk about some of the stuff that I like and I'm going to start with this hot end exchange system. So you push this lever here and the hot end comes down. <laughs> Usually you want to do it when there's, uh, when there's no filament in there, but I, I didn't wait and then you just put it back in and it locks into place and then you lock the filament in. Uh, just roll that back and we're, we're good to go. Uh, I didn't have a need to use it because I was just given one nozzle, but I could easily see having hot ends that contained different nozzles or different types of nozzles or, or different orifice diameters that you could easily swap in and out if needed. I didn't need this functionality and I was only provided with one, so I didn't get a chance to fully test that. 
Also, it goes without saying, this thing is built like a tank. You've got these massive linear rails on the Y and on the X and these lead screws on the Z are insanely huge. They are, they are fat, like a giant, uh, like a giant piece of candy. You know, those candies that you, never mind. The, the wires are on wire guides. Uh, the, the filament goes through this cleaner up through the tube. The, the build plate itself is, is massive and it's heavy and it's on top of this giant sled. It's safe to say this is not just engineered, this is over-engineered and that will lend itself to my final thoughts. Let's talk about what I didn't like about this printer and in my use there was only two things. One is minor, one is major but mitigated. The first being the minor thing, when the build plate lowers and you build something that's somewhat tall, it blocks the LCD and the controls in the front. And then you have to kind of get under and squint and, and look, and it's just, it's, it's annoying. It seems like if the LCD had a little bit more of a tilt to it, it might be mitigated better, but that was just one of those things. The second thing I didn't like, and this is far more important, is I couldn't get anything to stick to this build plate without adding some product to it. In fact, Preet included some magic goo in the box with this 3D printer, and I had to layer on a few layers in order to get stuff to stick to the ceramic build plate. This is the first ceramic build plate I've ever used, and uh, according to the website, it should just make things magically stick to it. That was not the case as, um, uh, polycarb, PLA, ABS, RPET, PETG, none of that would stick to the bare ceramic. And so I used magic goo, uh, a few layers of it, and I would, I would print to that and it did stick fine. But, uh, it was, it was one of those things where the website says one thing and, uh, in use it, it didn't apply. All right, I told you some things I like about this printer. I told you some things I did not like about this printer. It is time for my final thoughts, and they are, well, complicated. So this printer is amazing. I'm not gonna lie. This is a cornerstone of my, of my printer cave. So if I, if I have my favorite printers around me, this is easily one that I have within arm's reach that I can use at any time. The auto bed compensation and bed leveling mechanisms are second to none. The, the first layers that it lays down are like buttery smooth. Oh, they are so nice. And it performs extremely well. The problem is the price tag. This machine currently is priced at $3,499 US dollars. Yeah, this is a $3,500 printer. And I won't name names, but that means it exists in, in, in a level of these other crazy expensive printers that have bigger build areas or that might be enclosed or provide more functionality. And so originally I was going to say, no, I do not recommend you get this printer because it is priced greater than what its abilities are. But then, then I was thinking, I thought to myself, this... This really isn't a printer for me. I'm not the target demographic for this printer. In reading, I saw that 3D Gents is going to have a dental division and they are going to produce dental prosthesis using additive manufacturing methods. They have corporate customers that use this sort of printer and these sort of machines. And obviously I, I have some cheap printers. I have some expensive printers. I, I've had experience with many different printers uh, within those ranges and uh, this is built like no other and I think it's built this way because it's meant for industrial use and it's it's meant for manufacturing and and it's not meant for the hobbyist I don't I don't think this printer is meant as a desktop printer in your home office granted it's a wonderful printer and if you have this sort of cash available to purchase this sort of machine, I don't think you'll be disappointed one bit. It performs extremely well. 3D Gents is active on social media. They're responsive to emails. It's a really good company and they're good people. I've had conversations with them, but I don't think that you, my viewer, are the target demographic for this machine. Now, granted, if you're the CEO of a Fortune 500 company and you wanna get into additive manufacturing, 
look up the 3D Gents one, do some due diligence on the company and, and, and get one of these in house to have your team of scientists and engineers use. But if you're random McRanderson and you have a home office and you're looking for a second printer because you had a kid and you put it together or you got your first printer and you're, you're looking for something to really dig your teeth into, I don't think this is the printer for you specifically because of the price range. And I, I want to say it's priced itself out of that, but at the same time, I'm not its target demographic. So honestly, I, I don't know if this is a fair price to pay for what it's meant for. This is an expensive printer. It does a fantastic job. I want to say don't get it because it's expensive, but at the same time, I, I don't know if I can rightfully say that not knowing if I can speak for its target demographic. My goodness, that was complicated. It's a good printer. It's really expensive. How about that? TLDR, this awesome printer costs a lot. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, a big thanks to Preet over at Designbox 3D for providing this printer to me. This is a keeper and I'm going to continue to print with it and show off the prints I make with it. If you yourself want more information on this printer, I highly suggest you visit Designbox 3D and I'll put a link down in the description. And don't forget, expensive printers can still print all sorts of parts for 3D printed weapons. The 3D Gents 1 also provided parts for this tracer gun and this sleeper simulant, uh, which I love both of. All right, that's it for this printer review. Thanks for coming along on this journey. A big thanks to my patrons who support me at patreon.com. I couldn't do this without your support. Give this a thumbs up if you thought it was useful. Leave a comment down below if you have any further questions. Give someone you love a hug. As always, high five. Oh man, it feels good to get that printer review done. And you know, the sleeper simulant has some parts that were printed on the 3D Gents 1. I love this gun. I really need to finish it. If you want to keep up on its progress, you can look over there or over there. There's a couple of the videos where I was building it. Also, right down here, I'm going to put some social media links. Follow me on social media. Of course, I post pictures to Twitter and to Instagram and I'm Hopefully, uh, I post things to Facebook as well. I'd love for you to follow me there. Hey, you know, and don't forget, you're awesome. God, you're awesome. You're so awesome. So awesome. So awesome!